Hello, I'm Joe Paiva from GeoLearn. This is the first of a series of courses introducing you to the topic of errors in surveying. In this course, uh, before we begin, I'd just like to say a little bit about this topic uh, and why I believe it is to be a very important one. Unfortunately, it doesn't often get the attention it deserves from practitioners as well as people who are coming into the profession and certainly doesn't get discussed a lot in terms of uh, the actual uh, science and mathematics, the statistics that underlie this entire topic. So I would like to explain why I believe it is an important one. F uh, first of all, it should be understood that surveyors, regardless of the particular area of expertise they have with it, its boundary uh, surveying, or construction surveying, engineering, um, uh, site surveys, and so on, uh, geodesy, uh, all are expected to be experts at measurement. And the problem is that today, with our black box surveying technology, there's a tendency sometimes to push the button and not really understand what it is that the technology is doing in the process of obtaining those measurements for us. So, it's very common actually for field personnel especially to not even glance at the data that is being collected, uh, simply pushing the button, um, perhaps writing a feature code or a description to indicate the activity or the thing that is associated with the measurement and then to move on. That in a sense is fine, but it still means having to understand how the technology works and what may cause it to be limited in some way. Even uh, things such as uh, reporting of uh, errors, as is often done with the uh, remote, uh, with the real-time kinematic systems, for example, are simply estimates and should not be taken for the absolute truth. Uh, it's simply a prediction of how much uncertainty there might be. So button pushing is very common, unfortunately, and I like to s speak of it as the trained monkey approach to, s to surveying which is really not a good idea. Um, very often people think that our automated systems, our high-tech systems, allow us to put uh, less trained people in the field, people who are less knowledgeable about the science of the technology and the science of measurement. The truth of the matter is that it's actually the opposite. The less there is that's on the surface, the easier it is for something to go wrong and there is that uh, old adage about computing that with computers you can today make bigger mistakes faster than you could when you used to do them by hand. And a similar kind of thing can happen with surveying instrumentation uh, because of its nature today. So I'd like to make the pitch that uh, if we are experts, then let's be the experts that we are supposed to be. The consequences of not paying attention to errors means that poor quality results may be obtained even when precision is high. Uh, accuracy may be lower than what is desired and this can happen when not enough attention is paid to how uh, the survey is being done or the quality of the measurements that are being obtained. It's also true that Today, there are a lot of people with a background on the subject of statistics and errors, the mathematics and the science underlying it, who perhaps are scientists or engineers themselves. They might, they might not be involved in any branch uh, of the geospatial professions, but they will still understand enough about measurement and measurement processes to know if you didn't demonstrate an understanding of some of the topics that we cover not only in this course but far more advanced courses as well. And if that happens then it can cast a less than flattering light on the profession. Those of you who practice property boundary surveying probably will uh, recall uh, perhaps um, with a little bit of uh, enjoyment that uh, lawyers, for example, often complain that two surveyors cannot agree on a measurement of the same line, common a common line between two adjoining parcels, for example. 
Unfortunately, surveyors don't do a good job of explaining why these discrepancies occur. Uh, it's totally fine for two surveyors to come up with two different measurements, but they need to be within certain limits and surveyors need to be able to understand and explain uh, why these differences occur and why they are within certain limits.